microorganisms, whether that's a fungus or an alligator, play a really important role in the functioning of an ecosystem. However, there are some organisms that play a disproportionately large role in keeping that ecosystem together. These organisms have such a large impact that the removal of them from the ecosystem can not only create drastic changes throughout the ecosystem, but it could potentially cause that ecosystem to disappear. This type of organism, the one that an ecosystem largely depends on, is known as a keystone species. Think of a keystone species as the glue that holds an ecosystem together. Keystone species can be found across the globe, and in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple of them. Listen carefully, because at the end of this video, your task is to think of an animal that you think is a keystone species and tell us why. Gray wolves are one of the most frequently cited examples of a keystone species here in North America. In 1920, the last gray wolf was killed and removed from Yellowstone National Park, and wolves remained absent from that ecosystem for about 70 years. In their absence, the ecosystem of the park changed dramatically. Elk populations skyrocketed as a result of a lack of predation. This not only caused disease to become more rampant in elk populations, but it also changed the vegetation cover in the park. Notably, it changed the vegetation cover of willows, which grow in riparian ecosystems. Becoming overgrazed, riverbanks and streams literally collapsed from erosion, and many aquatic habitats throughout the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem were disturbed. The topography of the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem was changing without wolves, and it was not changing in a positive manner. In 1995, gray wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park, and slowly the ecosystem began to restabilize. Elk populations dropped to healthy levels as wolves preyed on them for food. This allowed plants to grow back on the edges of the rivers and the streams, restabilizing the banks. Recently, research done in Voyagers National Park in Minnesota has shown that wolves also play an important role in that ecosystem by killing beavers, an ecosystem engineer. By predating on beavers, wolves actually help to shape the formation of lakes and ponds throughout the greater Voyagers ecosystem. Similar research coming out of two very different areas of the United States goes to show us just how important it is to have wolves as part of an ecosystem. African elephants are not just keystone species, they're also an ecosystem engineer, meaning that they literally shape their ecosystems. Not only are African elephants the largest land animal, but they are also grazers. And it's not uncommon during their grazing that they will topple down trees. This promotes the growth of grasses and prevents the savannas in eastern and southern Africa from being taken over by shrubs and trees and becoming a forest. Creating grassland habitat allows spaces for gazelles and antelopes to live and the presence of prey brings predators like lions and hyenas and you see the savanna taking shape. Elephant dung also redistributes nutrients and seeds throughout the savanna. Without elephants, the vast savannas of Africa and the biodiversity that we see within them would not exist. Sea otters are cute and fluffy critters, but they're also fierce predators. Floating in the waters off the U.S. west coast, sea otters live in kelp forests, and they feed on sea urchins that live on the seafloor. These sea urchins consume the kelp that makes up the kelp forest. However, a sea otter can eat about 25% of their weight in sea urchins a day. However, throughout the 19th century, sea otters were hunted for their warm and luxurious fur. As their populations dropped, the populations of sea urchins skyrocketed because there was nothing to eat them. As urchin populations grew, they needed more food, and that food came in the form of the kelp forests. And slowly but surely, people began to see the kelp forest habitats disappearing. Luckily, a ban on hunting sea otters was put in place, and this has allowed their population to regrow. The more sea otters in a population, the more there are to eat the sea urchins, and so the sea urchin population restabilized to a healthy level, allowing the kelp forests to start to grow back. Like gray wolves, sea otter populations have not fully recovered from the persecution that they encountered in the 19th century. However, their numbers are, thankfully, on the rise. So hopefully
hopefully we will continue to see a healthy sea otter population preying on sea urchins and promoting the growth of a kelp forest. Now that we've discussed a couple examples of keystone species, what are some characteristics that all three that we talked about have in common? Keep this thought going. It's time for you to be a scientist and do some research on your own. In your response, tell us about an animal that you researched that you believe is a keystone species. Tell us what that animal is, why it's a keystone species, and how the ecosystem would look should that animal suddenly disappear.